So we meet again, YouTube. Um, today I wanted to talk about the most important relationship in our lives. Um, personally, I've dealt with sadness and depression and sorrow and emptiness and feeling like there's not really a point to life. I can't just came in. Fuck. No. <laughs> um, Right, and I'm clearly not alone in that. I feel like a lot of it has to do with the way society... Say hi! Society has framed everything recently. Um, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is that the most important relationship any of us has is the relationship we have with our... The relationship we have with ourselves, because if you really think about it, the only person you can't ever, ever get away from is yourself. Like, the voice you have in your head that is reflective of you, and the voice you have in your head that's reflective of your self-conscious, is the only thing, the only voice, the only opinion that you can't ever get away from. And I think it's important to develop that relationship so that we can come to a sense of understanding and an agreement that allows us to grow as people and to develop, I don't know, to find happiness is what I'm trying to say. And I think something that I struggled with a lot, and I think a lot of people struggle with, is being kind to ourselves and being gentle with growth. Because I, like, let's say that I do something and I'm like, oh, I dropped this thing, and like, I get mad at myself about it, and I'm like, wow, there you go again, being a clumsy dumbass. And then it's like, well, hold on, that mentality and that response to the self isn't really productive in any way. All it does is deteriorate the relationship that you have with yourself. So I want to promote and hope to help other people find a mindset. Stop! <laughs> um, to promote and help other people find a mindset. Please, please don't do that. Um, to where they can be soft and be gentle with themselves. I like to think of myself as having two inner, for the most part, like on a very general and like broken down level. Like I have two inner personalities. One of them is the adult version of myself where it's like, okay, these are your responsibilities. These are the things you have to do. And then the other version of myself is like the child, where it's like, okay, this is a thing that draws interest, this is fun, this is like curiosity and like childlike behavior and, you know, joy, all of those things. And there comes an intersection where the adult part of me needs to manage the child in me. So like, hey, I mean, I'm filming this video, I like what? 11.45 p.m. Um, so, ordinarily, that's not something I'm super cool with, but numerology and all that. Anyways, um, so the adult in me likes to manage the child in me because that is a way that I can be most productive. Like, just allowing a space for myself where I have planned something out and I can best take care of myself so that the youth I have left in me, the, the childhood curiosity and the vigor and the appreciation of all things beautiful can still show up. Creating a space where it's okay to follow my dreams because all of my basic needs are taken care of. And I think that a lot of us are Personally, I used to struggle a lot with um, immediate satisfaction versus delayed satisfaction, and it's like, oh, cool, stay up until like 4 p.m., 4 p.m., 4 a.m., doing whatever the hell I want, and then, you know, the next day you feel like absolute utter shit because you have to wake up and you have to go to work and you have to do all these things. But um, thinking of sleep as an investment in your happiness for tomorrow, like, take the time to make a list of all of the things you would try and do to make yourself as miserable as possible and... I don't remember where I got that from, but a lot of us do those things. Like, you underfeed yourself, you don't properly... You don't consume the proper nutrition to have a healthy mind and body. You don't 
take care of your emotional needs. You don't open a space for yourself to have this room to play around with the things that intrigue you and the things that bring you joy because you're so caught up in this like hit of dopamine that like is fleeting and doesn't actually bring any true sense of happiness. And I want to reference this podcast that I watched a couple months ago. It is Secular Buddhism. It's episode 60. It's by Noah Rashida. And he interviews this PhD, Ellen Petrie Lentz. Anyways, she says that happiness is, well, actually, in that she's quoting someone else, uh, Margaret Lee Runbeck. And the quote is, happiness is not a station you arrive at, it is a manner of travel, and that really, like, resounded in my brain and, like, rung true, so I wanted to pass that on. And, um, later on in the same podcast, I'll link to it below, um, Noah, the host, uh, references another quote by, um, Brother David Steindl Rost. I don't know if I said that right, and if I didn't, I'm sorry. Um... Happiness doesn't make us grateful. Gratitude makes us happy, and I think that that's really important. Um, going off of that, I think that creating a form of life where we can have profound happiness, serotonin, not dopamine, is radical, and it's profound, and it's much more lasting than dopamine, so take that and run with it. Um, but the whole point of what I'm trying to say is be kind and gentle with yourself because all of the reactions and all of the mannerisms that you have, like, when you react and when you respond to yourself, I don't know, like, I'll have a thought, and then after the, like, immediate intuitive thought that I have, like, the first thing that pops into my head, I think of that as, like, the inner voice, and then I have, like, the responsive voice. The responsive voice can be really cruel and can inhibit any positive growth because it's, like, you don't think about what you're gonna say, and in a sense, we're really powerful because we can, like, think about thinking, and if you think about the way that you think, you can change the way that you think, and I know that that's, like, very meta, but what I'm trying to say for like the eighth time now, is that having a positive relationship having a positive relationship with yourself is important and it's powerful because if you can be soft and gentle with yourself, if the adult in you can be kind and nurturing and loving to the child in you, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to create a space and a mindset and a state of being that will lead to ultimate better happiness than if you just, you know, continue reacting to your intuitive voice with more intuitive anger. And, you know, people are creatures of habit, so it's difficult to break out of that, but, you know, the first step is always the hardest, and that applies here too. So, just what I'm trying to say I need, to, I need to find a new catchphrase. Um, point blank period, action statement, call to action, whatever you want to refer to that as. Um, be nice to yourself. You're the only person you can't get away from, and being cruel to yourself in your head isn't productive in any way whatsoever. And it's not going to help you grow, and it's not going to help you change into a better person. So, 